Welcome to our explainer. Today, we're diving into some incredible research from Dr. Sudindra S.G., specifically for all you teachers and educators out there. We're going to pull back the curtain on a secret language, one that powers literally everything in our digital world. And you'll see, it's built from the simplest thing imaginable. Now look at this. This statement might seem a little crazy, but it is 100% true. Every word, every color, every single tiny pixel you're looking at right now, deep down, it's all just numbers. So how on earth is that possible? Well, let's find out. So how do we get from a simple number to the amazing complex stuff we see on our screens every day? It all starts with one tiny, and I mean tiny little building block. Let's get into it. And here it is. It's called a bit. You can think of the bit as the single atom of the entire digital universe. The easiest way to picture it is just like a light switch. It can be off, which the computer reads as a zero, or it can be on, which the computer reads as a one. That's it. That's the entire language. And believe it or not, everything a computer does is built from this simple on-off idea. Okay, I know what you're probably thinking. How can you possibly build a whole world out of just on and off? Well, it's all about how you combine them. It's really just a new way of counting, using a concept you all already know and teach. We all grew up with the system on the left, right? Decimal, or base 10. It gives us 10 digits to play with, 0 through 9. But a computer? It only needs two states, on and off. So its language, binary, is base 2. It only uses two digits, 0 and 1. The idea of counting is exactly the same. It just has fewer digits to work with. And this is where it all starts to click. You know how in our system, each place value is a power of 10? We have the ones place, the tens place, the hundreds, and so on. Well, binary works the exact same way, but with powers of two. So you have the ones place, the twos place, the fours place, the eights place, the sixteens place. Each spot is just double the one before it. Let's make this real with an example. Take the binary number 101. Reading from right to left, we have a 1 in the 1's place, we have a 0 in the 2's place, and we have a 1 in the 4's place. So you just add up what's turned on. 1, 4, plus 0, 2's, plus 1, 1, gives us the number 5. And there you go. A string of on-off switches becomes a number we can all understand. All right, so one bit is a switch. A few bits can make a number. But the real magic, the part that's truly mind-blowing, is what happens when we start stringing lots of them together. This is where those tiny little bits unlock these absolutely massive possibilities. Now here's the word you've definitely heard before, a byte. A byte is simply a group of eight bits. That's all it is. And this is the basic unit for pretty much all digital information. When you hear about kilobytes, megabytes, gigabytes, you're really just talking about thousands or millions or billions of these little 8-bit groups. So with just one byte, just eight of those little on-off switches, how many different combinations can you make? The answer is 256. Now that might not sound like a lot, but this was the bedrock of early computing. If you remember those classic 8-bit video games, that pixelated look was often because the whole system could only handle 256 different colors at one time, all from just 8 bits. But this is where things get wild. When computing technology jumped from an 8-bit system to a 32-bit system, the number of possibilities didn't just get four times bigger. No, it exploded to over 4 billion. This exponential leap is what gave us the rich, colorful graphics, the complex software, and the powerful computers we take for granted today. Okay, so computers are total wizards with numbers. We get that. But what about words? How do you teach a machine that only speaks in ones and zeros to understand the letter A? or a question mark. Well, that's where we get to the brilliant idea of encoding. Way back in 1963, the first standard was created. It was called ASCII, and it basically assigned a unique number to every letter, digit, and symbol in the English language. But it had a huge problem. It was designed only for English. So when computers started going global in the 80s, different countries made their own codes, and the result? It was total chaos. An email written on a computer in France would look like complete gibberish on a computer in Japan. This digital mess actually got its own name. In Japan, they called it Moji Bay, which literally means scrambled text. And I guarantee you've seen this yourself. You know when you open an old file or a weird email and it's just a bunch of random symbols and black boxes? That's Moji Bay. That's one computer's dictionary not matching another's. So, how did we fix this mess? With a brilliant solution called Unicode. 
It was created in the early 90s to be one single universal standard for everyone. Just look at the difference. ASCII had room for 128 characters. Unicode has space for over 120,000. It gives a unique number to pretty much every character from every language on Earth. And yes, that includes every single emoji on your phone. Problem solved. Okay, let's recap. We've seen that numbers are just bits. And we've seen that text is just a code for numbers, which are made of bits. Are you starting to see the pattern here? Let's bring it all home and see how this one simple concept is the universal language for absolutely everything. Because this idea goes way beyond just text. That mp3 file, your favorite song, it's just a massive list of numbers that describe the sound waves. A photograph? It's a grid of millions of numbers with each number telling a pixel what color to be. Videos, the money in your bank account, even this very presentation you're watching right now, at the end of the day, it's all just carefully organized sequences of ones and zeros. And that is the beautiful, simple truth at the heart of it all. Our entire vast, complex digital universe is built on the simplest possible foundation you can imagine, a switch that is either on or off. It is one single elegant system for representing our whole world in a way a machine can understand. So, as educators, when we're trying to explain this digital magic, it all comes back to this one fundamental idea, a language of just two symbols. And that leaves us and our students with a pretty exciting question to think about. If all of this was built from just ones and zeros, what are they going to build with them next?